All right, let's cover some techniques for easing sacroiliac discomfort or pain. Very helpful to have a ball, you know, a tennis ball. I'm using like a super ball that came out of a gumball machine. Um, and a dowel can be really helpful. Nobody has a dowel at home, right? But you do have a broom or you have a Swiffer stick or you have something that might function to help. Let's start by lying down on the back. Now we'll do the typical arching and flattening the pelvic tilt action that we see in yoga. And it's an inhale to arch the back away from the floor and an exhale to move the back closer to the floor. So what we do in yoga therapy is a little bit different here. Instead of just doing this action kind of automatically using the center of the body, I instead want to use the feet because this can be diagnostic and helpful for feeling when one half of the pelvis is not moving as adeptly as the other. So to create the arching, I'm going to pull back through both heels, kind of scrubbing the heels back on the mat. That creates an arch in the back. And then I'm going to push my heels away from me. They don't move. They just kind of dig into the mat and push forward, and that will move the low back closer to the floor. Continue using your feet in this isometric way, meaning that the feet don't move, but they do this push-pull kind of scrubbing action to create the arch. Okay, so that's with both feet working. Now, to be able to tell what, how one half is working, I'm going to try to create the same movement just using my right foot. So my right foot now takes over, dragging isometrically back to create the arch, pushing forward to create the flattening. And I'm sensing, does that feel coordinated? Does it feel smooth? Does it feel easy? And I'm going to switch to the left foot now. Now the left foot's gonna try to create the same motion. And when I do that, the left side feels just easy. It's like, okay, I'm doing it. There's no problem. It's smooth. It feels like it could do it rapidly. Uh, and there's no discomfort on the left side at all. There's some tweakiness and discomfort on the right side. When I use my right foot to create the motion, it feels thick and there's a little trembling in the thigh, it's, it's subtle, and it feels slow. It doesn't feel like I could do it quickly. It feels muddled as though it's moving through like, like thick foliage, trying to clear the way through the forest. And when the left side does it, it just feels like it's walking down an open path, a cement walkway, super easy. So I'm gonna continue, because I can feel that the right side feels less capable, less smooth, less coordinated. I'm going to continue rocking the pelvis using this right foot. And I'm actually going to lift the front of my right foot and just use the heel to create these actions. And I'm actually going to emphasize more the arch in the right side of the back so that when I pull back through the right heel, the heel's digging into the floor and isometrically scrubbing towards the right buttock. It tones the right calf, it tones the right hamstring, and it tones the right side of the low back. The whole pelvis still tilts, the whole back still arches, but the main thrust of the work is through the right half of the body here. And then a gentle push away, and then a pulling back, emphasizing the arch, pausing, holding, and then pushing away. Pulling back, holding for a few seconds, breathing, and then pushing away. Let's do that two more times, pulling back isometrically with that, <clears throat> the foot that's uh, connected to the more sore hip or back or side. And then push the heel away, and then pull back. Last time, holding. Feeling the contract and contraction, feeling the arch, the tone through that side of the back of the pelvis. And then relax and do nothing. Release both legs straight. Breathe and feel. Notice what's happening to pain sensations, tenderness sensations. And then 
bend the knee of the less affected hip, the quieter hip. See how everything feels. Release that leg straight. Bend the knee of the affected hip, the SI area that feels sore. Let's see if there's any improvement. There's an improvement for me. And I'm gonna bend both knees, feet to the floor. Hands slide under the low back. And then seeing as the spine relaxes a little bit more towards the floor now, that it feels much more equal between the left and the right sides. Okay, and then we roll over to the side and push up to hands and knees. And come to forearms, as you're down on the forearms, and take the knees as wide as the mat. So what can help when you have this upper sacral area pain is to reestablish the lumbar curve. And this position is great for that. If you're quite flexible, you're going to notice that you're not letting the shoulder blades collapse in towards the spine. You're not sinking the chest all the way down. I want you to push into the forearms and keep some tone through the upper abdominals because we're trying to get this part of the low back to hinge beginning with the sacrum through the low back and not for all the arch to come into the upper back while the pelvis stays tucked so again push into the forearms let the low back start to arch as you continue to push the forearms into the mat and to help the arching the knees without moving will spread the mat apart if you're on a blanket, you're stretching the blanket apart between the knees. And this frees up the pelvis to tilt forward. You'll see that the low back arch increased for me. And you're feeling the tone. And so you're charging up the muscles that help to nutate the sacrum and establish the lumbar curve. And what's cool about these tiny little muscles called the multifidi, they're, they're the core muscles of the back body. We often think of the core as just the front, but there's muscles all along the spine, deep muscles that help maintain the position of the vertebrae relative to one another. And we want these muscles to be active so when I was doing my kickboxing and my sacrum had gone out, I really overstretched that area and tucked that area too much and it didn't feel good afterwards. So here I'm reestablishing that lumbar curve. I'm reestablishing hip flexion without tucking or rounding the low back. This is what can help the sacrum. Now, as we stay here even just a little bit longer, I'm gonna relax uh, the non-affected hip leg, which for me is my left leg. And I'm instead gonna just do this isometric spreading of the right knee out to the side, with just my right leg, because that's the affected hip for me. Obviously, if your left side is bothering you, you'll do the left side and relax the right. So as this right leg takes over, I can feel that it's a weaker movement, less strong. But as I just concentrate on allowing that right side to work a little bit more, and I'm pushing into my hands to keep some tone through the abdominals, not letting the ribs sink, not collapsing the shoulder blades in towards the spine. As I maintain some core stability in the front and bring tone to the back, it's starting to feel better and better. Okay, and then we're gonna walk the forearms forward and shift forward till your chin is just about over your wrist. I want you to keep that lumbar curve and I want you to keep the pushing into the forearms and then we'll shift back a bit, but not so far back that then the, we lose the lumbar curve and the sacrum starts to tuck. As soon as I did that, just to demonstrate it, the right side of my pelvis was like, ouch. So I'm gonna keep the arch, keep the knees isometrically spreading Shift forward with your inhale, shift back with your exhale. Following your breath, go at your pace. You're not trying to go to child's pose. That's why we made your stance longer. That's why we walked the elbows forward. If it feels too long, you're not getting enough movement, you can shorten the stance again. And you're maintaining a steady, fairly neutral spine here 
making sure that there's just enough lumbar curve for you and that there's no pinching in the back. If you dropped too far, you might start to get a pinching. Right? But if you rounded too much, you're going to be feeling more abdominal work than back work. I do want you to feel tone and sensation through the back all the way to the sacrum. These multifidi muscles begin on the sacrum and flow all the way up the spine to the neck. All right, and then push up to straight arms and bring the knees to a more normal uh, outer hip distance apart. And here's where your Swiffer stick or your broom or the dowel, if you have it, dowel's just a couple of dollars, like $4 at the hardware store around by me. And the dowel is helpful to learn when we're actually in neutral spine. So I've placed the dowel alongside my spine. It's right on top of the spine. And I want, I'm looking for three points of contact here, the back of the skull, in between the shoulder blades, and then the sacral area. So the sacrum bone is right in the middle of the pelvis. So I don't want the low back touching the pole, which will make it really hard to keep the pole balanced. And those of you who are really flexible in the upper back, you, you might lose the um, area between the shoulder blades and you won't feel the pull. So I want you to feel the pull between the shoulder blades at the skull and at the sacrum. If you lose any of those points, especially the sacral point, the spine is too round. Here I'm showing I've, I've lost the head and I've lost the sacrum and the pull is just balancing on my upper back. If that's happening for you, you'll have to isometrically spread the knees a little more, let your butt stick up in the air, and firm the shoulder blades towards the midline, lifting the head. Once you have all those three points of contact, as best as you can do today, you shift forward with the inhale, shift back with the exhale. And gaze is straight down towards the mat or the floor. And if you keep losing the pole, this is when you need to have a sense of humor about it because it's it's just showing you it's showing you where your your body manages through movement to avoid maintaining neutral spine and it's really helpful you'll you'll start to learn how to target those areas in the spine so that you can maintain neutral so of course the spine moves out of neutral all the time and that's normal and fine and good. We round the spine, we side bend, we twist, we back bend. But when we're working therapeutically, we, wanna, we would like to make sure that you can maintain neutral, which is harder than it seems, right? It seems like that would be the easiest position, but it's often the most challenging. Okay, so we'll take the pull off. And then we're going to come up to standing. So I'm going to take the non-affected hip leg forward. So for me, the left side's quiet. I'm taking that leg forward. Push down with your hands into that thigh. Push into the front heel. Lift the back knee. And then step forward. So now I'm going to squat. I'm in chair pose with my hands on my thighs. Push the hands down in the thighs just to recruit some abdominals. You don't have to round or tuck. Again, we're looking for a neutral spine feeling here. And now I want you to come to standing in a specific way. So listen to me first. You're going to push your heels down into the mat and isometrically apart, like you're trying to stretch the mat. The heels push down and out, and that will bring you up to standing. Keep the weight in the heels. Now you're in mountain pose, Tadasana, and you can breathe and feel. And this is a great time to step to your mirror and come and look and see, are the hip points more level? And then when you release your arms, are the hips more centered? And mine are, hooray. And my sacroiliac pain is, is almost completely gone. I just have like about 5% left. Okay, so now the next step is to pick something up when you have a sacrum that's vulnerable. So knowing that if we round and 
tuck in order to pick something up, especially if we try to pick something up with straight legs, um, we can knock the sacrum right back out. So the challenge here is to do what we've all been told a million times, which is to bend the knees and keep what they call a flat back. And the flat back would be this neutral spine, which actually has a little arch in it. So I'm gonna do that to bend down, pick up my pole and push the feet down and apart to come up to standing. Hopefully that was pain free. Grab the pole now, it will serve to help you find neutral spine when you're standing. So we have three points of contact again. I have the back of the skull in between the shoulder blades and the sacrum. The pole is right down the midline, okay? And if you don't have the head and you don't have the sacrum, you're just kind of pivoting around the upper back or you've lost the head, as I'm showing here, um, you'll probably have to stick your butt out behind you a little, soften the knees so the weight's in the heels, firm the upper back to draw your head back in space. If you're more flexible, uh, you might have this tendency to stand so you don't have any contact for the pole to touch the upper back. If that's true for you, you'll have to feel like you're slouching a little bit to move the ribs back in space and have all three points of contact. Now we'll move holding this pole in place through our chair pose and back to Tadasana. Inhale here as you stand. Exhale, slowly come into your chair pose. Drive the heels down and apart to come back up to standing. That's your inhale. Exhale, sitting into chair pose. And keep going, following your breath. I am also driving my heels down and apart. I'm having my knees burst isometrically out as I sit. So I'm doing that because I would tend to do this pose by tucking. And so if you're sitting into the squat and you lose the sacrum, the pole, you can't feel it touching the middle of your pelvis, you're tucking and the sacrum can pop right back out as mine just got aggravated again. So if that's happening for you, as you squat, push the heels down and apart, the knees isometrically push out so that if I look down, my knees are centered over the fourth toe of each foot. And to show you from the front, that tendency is the knees to knock in. Anytime the knees knock in excessively, um, it strains, it pulls on the structures that stabilize the sacrum as it connects to the leg. So we'd like to keep the knees straight ahead over the fourth toe, more or less, as you practice coming in and out of the squat. And then let's hold that chair pose. And as you hold the pose, you can try bursting the affected hips knee a little wider. So if you're feeling it through the right side as I am, I'm imagining there's a wall to the outside of my right knee and I'm isometrically pushing the right knee out into that imaginary wall. And I'm feeling all of that energy and strength come through the right hip. Drive both heels down and apart to come up to standing. Release the pole, breathe and feel. And you're checking here to see how much sensation is traveling through that area. Is it starting to feel better? Okay, we'll put the pole off to the side. And now we're finding those two um, hip points in the back or the dimple area, the bony area, and are they less tender? And for me, they definitely are. It's feeling better. I feel a little echoey feeling through here. And so what we'll do is we'll find that general area. It might be tender or not, bony or dimply or not. Just do the best you can to guesstimate where is the middle of my pelvis. And you're bringing, if you can feel those bumps or those dimples, you're going to bring your thumbs just inside those two points. And you can use your thumbs. Get a little closer so you can see. You can use your thumbs or your knuckles. And as you maintain some 
tone through the belly, you're going to slide the skin of the sacrum up. So you're actually manually doing what the multifidi muscles do. As they contract, they pull up. It tilts the sacrum forward. It can tilt the pelvis forward. If, if we let it, it could really go into this big arch. But you're going to hold steady. So the, the bones of the sacrum, the bones of the pelvis these hip bones aren't moving so much as we're getting the sacrum to nutate inside of those bones. I'm going to use the knuckles on my right hand and do the right side more because that's my affected hip. And now we're sitting into a squat using that flowing upward feeling, using the knuckles dragging upwards. Drive the heels down and apart to come up. This feels even better. Repeating your squat, sitting low, and then standing back up. Keep going, following your breath. And one more time. Okay, so the hip bones are supposed to rotate independently of one another. That happens when we walk. That happens when we do a lunge. That happens a lot. So that's a normal and appropriate movement. The sacrum has to mediate between the two hip bones as they rotate. So the, the sacrum is pivoting across many angles to be agile with that. So we're going to try to help the sacrum do those movements. So step to the top of your mat, bring the knuckles to the sacral area. I'm going to concentrate on having my knuckles working just this right side for me because it's my affected hip. Wait to your heels, unlock the knees, zip and tone the belly, slide the fingers of your right hand up and slowly sit into your squat. Keeping, um, shift the weight to your left leg and then touch the right foot back into a lunge, keeping most of the weight on the front foot, and then step back forward, shift the weight to the right leg, tap the left foot back, and then step it forward. So as we go back and forth here, we're making sure that we don't transfer the weight to the back leg and twist the hips. I want your hips to stay square to the top of your mat. And in fact, you're focusing most of your attention on the leg that's not moving. So the stationary front leg, making sure that the knee does not narrow. So important for stability in the sacral area and stability in the knee and stability of the hip joint, that the knee doesn't collapse in when it becomes the balancing weight-bearing leg. Okay, so now we'll step the left leg back and go ahead and start to put some weight on that back foot. And the front heel pushes into the floor, pushing you back, pushing you upright as the back foot pushes you forward. And so we're going to equalize the amount of work that's happening here. The back leg is trying to push you forward, but the front leg says no. And you start to lower the hips, maintaining this work of dragging the skin of the sacrum up. Okay. Push off the back foot a little more and step back into chair pose at the top of your mat. And then switch sides. Right leg goes back. Go ahead and let it take some weight. As you lean back, the front leg straightens a little bit more and you feel more weight on the back leg and then push off the back leg and you'll feel more weight come to the front leg. Push, pull that action a little bit, rocking forward and back until they feel like they're equally working, and then lower the hips a little closer to the floor. So the pelvis is about at the height of the front knee, more or less, and the skin of the sacrum slides up in this position. This is a much more profound activity for me when the left leg is forward and the right leg is back. I'm feeling much more sensation through the whole right side of the pelvis, the right thigh. Good. Push off the back heel, lean forward so more weight's on the front leg, step forward. 
Stand in mountain pose, Tadasana. See how you're feeling, see how you're doing. 